people need an income that's guaranteed to them. If you lose money to taxes, you're never getting that money back. You need to get serious about adding some lower risk. Greed. I don't like greed. The thing to be afraid of, honestly, is the thing that we're not thinking of, the black swan event. There's a tsunami coming. Bye, bye, bye. Welcome to Retirement Coffee Talk with Sharice Rivers. Just coffee talk. There's a lot of noise, a lot of chatter. Who do you listen to? Who do you not listen to? You have to stay focused. A fun and informative look at the issues of wealth, retirement, and protecting your life savings. These advisors out there that were trained to sell, 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 and have all these fees, 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 they don't want to talk, talk, talk about this product because <laughs> they make less, less, less money. <laughs> and now, Retirement Coffee Talk with Sharice Rivers. Hello again and welcome to Retirement Coffee Talk with Sharice Rivers at Zinnia Wealth. My name is Randy Cook. Each week, Sharice and I sit down here and go through some of the headlines that are out there, some of the things that you might be seeing and hearing about in financial news. But you know what? The most important thing is what's happening in your financial news. Where are you when it comes to planning for, saving for, getting into retirement? And that's really what we talk about and what Sharice does for a living. She helps people in and around retirement and tests your retirement. That's mm -hmm. one of the things we talk about. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm great. Um, I had a good weekend the other weekend mm -hmm. and um, went to the Bob Rose scramble for ARC. He has an amazing scramble. My daughter uh, got to go with me this year and uh, we showed up in the final hour. As soon as we got in the golf cart, we didn't get the warm up and went to the first hole and uh, I hit it really far, and then my daughter outdrove me by ah. 20 yards. I'm thinking, without practice swings and straight, I went, holy cow, Ella. She is an impressive kid. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and then we had our one-hit wonder, and then we rode around the rest of the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and right after that, then we had, oh, we, me and Ella went to, we, this is our mommy weekend we do every year, where we go to the Tim Tebow banquet and scramble. Okay. And then um, we did the Tim Tebow Foundation banquet, it, it was very neat. Brock Purdy was there. Mm -hmm. um, we talked to him for a little bit, and Tim, Timmy, I don't want to say Timmy, introduced us to him and just really got to get to know him and talked about, you know, what he's doing off the field, which was very cool. He's He is like the Tim Tebow in the professional football world. Okay. Versus, because Tim Tebow, like college students are, uh, you know, he's he's a big Christian. The, the college students follow him. Even everybody follows him. Let's, let's be real about that. But Purdy is, you know, he's a big Christ follower himself and how even in our congregation at our church, at Church of the Springs, our Pastor Ron brought him up and talked about him and his story, which I didn't even know prior to that. So it was great that our pastor brought that up. And then I got to meet him like a month later. And then I talked about what my pastor said about him and how he really raised a lot of awareness about what he's spreading and, and his joy and Christianity. And it was great. My daughter was in awe. And my daughter's like, is he married? I'm like, <laughs> I, I think he's got a girlfriend. He's really cute. <laughs> and when Purdy, Brock Purdy was there, all of a sudden, Tim Devo was top liver. Yeah, but you're, you're raising the bar pretty high there for, for who she chooses as a boyfriend. I know, I, no doubt. I'm like, Ella, you're going to be 15 years old. And it was so much fun. And then the next day, Ella and I were going to leave. We weren't going to do the scramble. But um, the foundation said, no, get a golf cart. Come right around. And we got to hang out. And just enjoy the day with all the golfers. And it was very fun. And nice. Ella, Ella just always says, I feel so blessed because the very next morning we're getting coffee and Tim Tebow walks up to me. Hey, Sharice. Hey, Ella, how you guys doing? And Ella just drops her jaw. She doesn't know what to say. And we're just having a conversation. Nobody else is in the room. And Ella later on says, mom, I don't understand. You have all these conversations. Like they know you, like you guys hang out. I'm like, well, we've been hanging out for years. And she, I said, Ella, these people pull up their pants the same way we do every day. They're no different. Uh, and I, and she, she's like, oh, okay, that, that makes sense, mom. I'm like, so treat them like you, like, like it's your mom, like it's your dad, like it's your buddy next door. Just there's, another there's no person. Difference. Yep. So yep. it was a really fun weekend for us. So Great. once a year we get to do that. All right. Also, well, Sharice has been to a lot of events, and she's actually hosting an event coming up yeah. on the 26th at the Ocala office. It's our annual shredding event, and we do this every year after tax season because you may get in there and start to take a look at some of your records and go, why do I have my tax records from 1999? Okay, you're right. <laughs> why do you do that? You don't have to keep them that long. And so you can bring them down to our event and shred them safely. And Sharice, tell us a little bit about what's going on there. 
Yeah. So we do this every year. Our clients like to show up. Um, we always have different food or food trucks. We're actually going to do something a little different this year. Every year we have some sort of charity um, there and we're raising awareness for them. And last year we had The Rock. This year we're going to have the Grilled Cheese Foundation. Mm -hmm. I don't talk much about it, Randy, but we are raising a lot of awareness this year. And I, I think I should. It's our own foundation. It's a 501c3 and it's to help um, young people in middle school and high school foster their dreams, their passions, and their talents. So we're going to have our executive director of the Grilled Cheese Foundation there um, talking about it, and we're going to have some great giveaways. Um, we had a really big donation coming to the Grilled Cheese Foundation a couple of weeks ago, so I'm going to do a shout out and thank you to the Taylor family. They're truly amazing, and they watched me start um, this foundation probably four years ago, and then COVID slowed it down, so they really truly believe in it. And if anybody um, wants to check it out, it's grilledcheesefoundation.com. And uh, so we're, we're going to, that's going to be there. We're also going to have some great giveaways. Our Zinnia Platinum Club members will get swag bags with some really neat guest gifts. I can't give it away on radio, but something I really wanted to be very unique. And, um, and if you're a first timer and you just want some stuff shredded and you want to get to know us and see where our offices, you'll, you can also enter the raffle when you come and we're going to have the grilled cheese emporium food truck there. So that'll be fun too. So everybody's welcome. And um, that's April 26th from three to five. All right. At our Ocala office. And you can yes. find everything online at zinniawealth.com. Z-I-N-N-I-A wealth.com. Hit the event tab there and you'll be on your way. All right. So let's get into it a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talk about money here on the show and there was a lot of money at stake not too long ago. That Powerball got up to one point three billion dollars. And somebody in Oregon really needs a financial advisor right now because oh boy. they want it. Congratulations <laughs> to them. But there was an interesting article that while this was all going on and as the Powerball was going up and up and up and up and up, uh, there was an economist. His name is Paul Dietrich. And he wrote an article saying, you know, this is actually what happens in the stock market, because when the Powerball gets up to about 750 million to a billion dollars that's when people all start taking notice and yes. everybody starts buying tickets and it goes <laughs> up really fast at that point it's like a momentum thing well he says the same thing happens in the stock market when the stock market goes down and there's like a tipping point at about 13 percent if it goes down 13 percent then people start selling and there's a momentum shift and things start going down very quickly. Mm -hmm. He says between 36 and 49 percent. Now, our market actually has gone down well over a thousand points over the last week, week and a half, two weeks. And people are wondering if this is one of those things where it just kind of keeps rolling down and rolling down. And then it can just the floodgates kind of open. And now all of a sudden we've got a, a correction. We've got a bear market. We've got yeah. a recession. Who knows? So, Sharice, when we talk about stories like this, you tell us don't try to time the market, okay? If news like this happens, don't react. But if you're close to retirement and you see this and you say, I don't want to lose 36 to 50% of my money, are you being smart by making a move or are you being a market timer? How do you see that? Yeah, so it is definitely the season of life that you are in or going into. So, yes. It is a smart time of your life to make some decisions. You're being smart, right? Okay. The market's done nothing but just go up for the last 13, 14 years. And as we know, eventually whatever goes up also must go down. And momentum is key here. So I like how you say momentum because we do um, momentum investing in our active managed portfolios mm -hmm. and things that are doing well, we stay committed. They have a nice momentum. If they're going forward, we're going to stay committed. But if a few things start, the momentum goes down, you know, we want to get out of those and find them things that are moving forward. Right? So here's the deal. When you're in this season of life and it's specifically five years before you retire, but absolutely specifically in retirement, there needs to be a shift in life. There is a shift in life. There's a shift in how you travel. There's a a shift in how you hang out with family. There's a shift how you participate in church. And there's certainly must be a shift in your retirement plan and your assets that you have saved your entire lives. And as long as you've made those financial shifts, you shouldn't be worried about this 13% drop and then it tumbling down to possibly 36 to 49%. And some of you out there, I know have for a fact have not made that retirement shift. You're still doing what you were doing when you were working because that's just what you know. That's what we've been taught. Nobody's really 
shown you a trued up financial plan and how now your investments are going to change as you're taking withdrawals from your account. So if you are somebody, I want you to listen up here. If you're driving specifically, be careful. If you're pulling money out of your investment portfolio, let's say you have a 60, 40 portfolio, it's just plain Jane, more of a stock jock strategy, no real plan. And you're pulling money out and the market goes down 13%. And then we start to watch that momentum go down and now it's going down 15%, then 16% and 20%. My question to you, the listeners right now, what is your exit strategy? What is your actual plan? Do you stop pulling money out of your account to live life in retirement? Or do you keep pulling those dollars as the stock market continues to go down to 25 to maybe 30 to 35 to 50 Point one percent, like it did in two thousand seven and eight, and this has not happened yet, but it's going to happen. And what is your plan? What is your exit strategy? Do you have a written plan that so that you can see how to bob and weave when that day happens? Because the one thing I'm going to tell you is that if it's going down and you're living on your money, that was the worst decision and mm. worst plan that you could have ever done. It, it's not the same way as when you were working right? But because you weren't even living on that money, you were contributing during those times. Now you're living on your money. You're, you're in the sequence of returns risk season of life. And this season of life, there has needs to be a plan. You need to see it in writing and you need to bob and weave because the momentum is going to change. And that means your income withdrawal strategy, that momentum is going to need to shift to your backup strategy. Do you have a backup strategy for your income plan when the market does tumble? If you have that 60, 40 stock shock strategy is my question. So we talk about this all the time, the three main components that we want to make sure everybody has in their financial and their retirement plan is income, protection, and growth. And basically, this almost encompasses all three, Sharice, because we want protection of our money, so we don't want to be too much at risk. We need to have growth in case that market does go down, so our our accounts are sending us money, and then that gets into the income conversation. So this is all a part of a financial plan. And if this is these headlines are kind of scaring you right now, yeah. this is a time to come in. Don't think that you're being a market timer. Be a smart investor. Be a smart person with your money. Be the CEO of your money mm-hmm. and make some smart decisions. Getting an analysis of where you are right now. And if that market did go down 10 percent and then 20 and 30 and 40, what happens to your money? Let's run the numbers on that. And then you make the call. You say, I don't want it to go below that. Okay, let's do it. Here's our number. Here's our website. Uh, ZinniaWealth.com is the best place to start. You'll see a gold box there. It says complimentary retirement consultation. When you click on that, we'll ask you to put in a little information there, and our team reaches out to you. Or you can reach out to us right now at 833-368-3680. Again, 833-368-3680. And we'll sit down and do the math on your retirement. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, what are the things that are worth splurging on in retirement? There's an interesting article that says, if you do these four things, you'll never regret them. So we'll talk about it. Coming up next on Retirement Coffee Talk. Welcome back to Retirement Coffee Talk with Sharice Rivers at Zinnia Wealth. Online find us, ZinniaWealth.com. And while you're on our website, look up uh, the navigation bar there. There's a lot to go through, the education tab. You can click on that, useful guides. There's lots of stuff that you can download there. We talked about our shredding event. If you look under events, that's right there. If you want to ask a question of us that we put on the show You can hit contact us and then you scroll down a little bit and it hits ask Sharice and you can put in your question there and we'll do it right here on the radio. So lots of things on our website. That's ZinniaWealth.com. All right. So last week you told a really interesting story, Sharice, about the guy who in his retirement wanted to buy an airplane. And so he came back with a three hundred thousand dollar airplane and you said, "Okay, let's run the numbers on that. And you went hmm, maybe a little less expensive airplane. And then he found another one that was Mm 175,000 and that fit in the budget and he was going to be just fine. So that was his splurge in retirement. So an interesting article came out and this is from MSN and it says four money splurges you will never regret 
in retirement. First of all, splurges on your health, splurges on your family, splurges on travel, and splurges on charity. They say that if you spend money on these things, you won't regret them. But my question to you is, Sharice, when somebody comes in and says, I want to buy a motorhome, I want to buy a plane, I want to do a trip for 15 people to Hawaii, something Mm -hmm. like that, I can imagine those could be budget busters. Those are ones you go, can we afford this? Ooh, that's kind of high. I don't know. Are many of the conversations that you have with your clients, are they, okay, we got to pare this back just a little bit, or (laughs) are they, this is what you've saved for, let's do it. I'm making retirement dreams come true every day, Randy, (laughs) right? And the team. So, yeah, we get all those requests. Okay, Sharice, we have this income plan built out. You showed me if I pass away first where we land and, you know, one Social Security goes away and half of this pension goes away. And and, and you showed us that why we don't need to buy long-term care by the time we're 85. We're going to have some money there. We could self-pay if we wanted to. So we've done all that, Sharice. But now, (laughs) for example, I want to buy a plane. But I want to give you an example of somebody who just came in. So during COVID, I had a gentleman learn about me through our Facebook Live all the way in Utah. And we created this income plan and he's ecstatic. And I saw him and his wife just the other day. And to this day, they're even happier than ever. We have more income than we actually intended and and planned for. And he said, there's one thing, Cherise, that we didn't plan for. And I said, we, what, what, what was that? (laughs) And he went, we have our travel plans and we have this income plan. We have more than we need. He's like, but the one thing is I would love to take my grandkids to Europe. I'd love to take my grandkids to Disney. And that's a big cost. We're about to go on a cruise. And I didn't tell you this, but I'm bringing two of the grandkids with us. So that's costing us like $7,000 more based on the trip and the food, et cetera. And I said, okay, so let's figure out that plan. And I said, how long do you plan to do this? And they're 63 right now. And they said, we would like to be able to do this at least for 10 years. So we had to up their income plan and then re-show them, okay, so if we pull out an extra $10,000 a year, for the grandkids to do whatever you want with them. This is what our bucket of money is going to look like approximately when we're 85 years old. And I said, that just means we have a little bit less for long-term care, but you'll still be able to pay for long-term care if you both actually go into a nursing home and there's still potentially a legacy left over. And I said, he said, but what if I want to spend 20,000? Cause I have more than two grandbabies. <laughs> and so we put that in a plan And I said, okay, so if we do this, we have to do this. And so we kind of looked at the different semantics and he went, okay, he's like, then let's change our income plan now that we're seeing this in writing and let's put that into the plan. So where we weren't expecting it, we put an extra $20,000 in the plan from the day COVID started. And what, you know, what was great about that? He said, you know, we've done so great on our safe money strategies. He, he was, he said, I don't want to sell any of these stocks, Sharice, that you picked because they're up over, you know, 200%. And, and I said, yes, but we got to take opportunity and chisel a little bit off the top. This is how we keep making this, this income plans work. And he went, okay, whatever you, you want and you need. But I get that every day. It's either going to be health or Sharice, did we, did we plan for, hey, I, I'm going to get all my teeth pulled and I'm going to put <laughs> some new porcelains in there. We have to plan for that in healthcare, especially long-term care. Here's a great example. Somebody came into me brand new. It had to be about three or four weeks ago, Randy. And they said, listen, I've been listening to your radio show and what you're telling me makes sense, but I'm not getting it from my advisor. My advisor keeps telling me I need to buy a long-term care policy, but I, I feel like I don't need to. Can you tell me whether or not I need to? So as we build this plan out, because we might need to splurge for healthcare, right? This is our four splurges. Mm -hmm. And that means we might need to buy a life insurance that covers uh, long-term care or a long-term care plan or whatever is out there to cover that care. So the spouse still in the house isn't financially destitute. We did the entire full-blown income plan. We showed one of the spouses passing away. We showed what if this happens, what if this happens? And I said, listen, when you're 80 to 85, if this is the age where we might need long-term care, I said, based on what you have saved on a conservative and ultra pessimistic view, no, you need, don't need to go buy a $500,000 life insurance policy and spend $20,000 a year for the next 10 years for it. because you have so much saved already that you could self-fund it. I mean, you, you can see in the plan, there's already an extra $500,000 to cover that care in the future. And just in the Roth IRA alone, which is tax-free. And he went, you know what? I had a feeling I needed to see you and talk to you about it. But the thing is, is that a lot of people are going to tell you what you need to buy, what you need to do. 
But how are they going to show that to you if they don't do the math for you? So listen, we're talking about the retirement splurges. You know, I'd rather you splurge on charities and travel in your family than go in and splurging and buying that long-term care policy, that life insurance policy, if you don't need it. But how are you going to know where to allocate your dollars? Do we put 20000 into family and kids and travel and charity or put $20,000 into a long-term care plan for the next 10 years? If I can show you that path, you're going to make better decisions for the future so that you can enjoy those times with the kiddos, with your spouses, and do those things that you didn't get to do because now we're we're not in fear of running out of money. Now we're not in fear of health care or long-term care. So let's make sure that that fear is gone of where to allocate your money. And let's just make sure that we really click in and we, we, we make the absolute best decision we can in the beginning phases, not later on. Well, there's not too many national commercials for financial companies that I really like, but there is one. And it reminds me of what we're talking about today. It's a couple who comes in and they do their plan. And then they come in a second time. They look at the guy and they go, change your plans. And then they they work that in. And then they come in again and they've got pictures of, you know, their granddaughter is going to have twins. Change your plans, you know. And so that is what, what I get from your your response to this, Sharice, is your retirement plan is a living document and it needs to be changed and, and nudged and moved and adjusted as you go through your retirement. Things are going to change. You're going to say, hey, we were down, uh, you know, uh, on the beach and there was a condo for sale and boy, it looks good. Can we do it? Yeah, these things are going to come up and you're going to want to know. Does it fit in the plan? So it starts a conversation. And that's really what I get out of this, Cherise, is it's not a set it and forget it or you put me on a, on a plan and I sail off into the sunset. We're going to work on this together for the next 10, 20 years. Yeah, it doesn't end, by the way. Right. <laughs> a lot of people who come in even to this day say, uh, we're changing the plan again. I'm like, yeah, I know. It's it's normal. Let's, let's get going, mm-hmm. you know, and, and because we have to bob and weave, whether it's investments, we have to bob and weave, whether you need more money or something that wasn't planned in the plan, we're having that all of a sudden put it in the plan. Um, and that's just normal. But you want to have that partner and that advisor that can bob and weave with you and understand you um, and your household and what your dreams and goals are. Well, one of the things about going over to the villages is I know a lot of you are already retired in the villages and and you're going along just fine. And then all of a sudden one of these comes up and you go, "Okay, now what? Okay, that's why we we have Zinnia U and we have a couple of opportunities coming up on the 25th Mm -hmm. at the Freedom Plaza office in the villages Uh, on the 25th. Uh, Sharice is doing a couple of Zinnia U opportunities for you to sit down and maybe hear Sharice talk through some of these things, ask some questions. She'll be over there at 10 o'clock in the morning for one and then three o'clock in the afternoon for the other. So even if you're in retirement and all of a sudden you say, uh, change of plans, what can I do now? You need somebody to be walking you through that. And and we would love to be the people to do that. Give us a look on our website. All of that is there. You can sign up for those opportunities right there, or you can give us a call as well. If you're in retirement right now and you're kind of in your mind going, I wonder if we could do this. Well, why don't you sit down with Sharice and find out? ZinniaWealth.com is our website. Z-I-N-N-I-A Wealth.com. Or give us a call at 833-368-3680. 833-368-3680. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we talk a lot about different financial articles here on the show. And you wonder, should I, can I believe all that stuff? Well, there's a lot of places where people are getting their financial information And some of that financial information is not only misleading, but the people writing it have an agenda. And we're going to talk through that coming up next on Retirement Coffee Talk. Welcome back to Retirement Coffee Talk with Sharice Rivers at Zinnia Wealth. Online, you can find us at ZinniaWealth.com, Z-I-N-N-I-A, Wealth.com. If you like what you're hearing, we have a podcast and you'll hear this show. You'll hear portions of this show, all our past shows, a lot of interviews. A lot of that stuff is on our website as well. If you look up our media tab, look up Retirement Coffee Talk and you'll see that right there. You can also find us on your favorite podcast carrier, iTunes, Spotify, all of those. We're out there under Retirement Coffee Talk. 
All right. So a lot of people get their news from social media, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter. It's kind of a shame, actually. But if you try to find your financial news from those sources, you got to watch out. One study found that 63 percent of the financial advice on TikTok was misleading and 36 percent of the videos were pushing people to specific stocks. So they've got an agenda out there. So here you are thinking you're getting non, you know, biased information, but actually they're trying to push you to buy something. So, Sharice, have you had clients that come in with questions from things like this, from maybe questionable sources that you've got to say, okay, we got to dive a little bit deeper into this? Yeah, on average, I would say one of the biggest uh, questionable sources out there is family advice. The second one is like the neighbor. And then the third one is social media. So I see a le little less on social media, but I did have a client come in and say, Sharice, you know, the, the account I'm holding on to the reins with, and I'm supposed to be telling you what I'm going to buy. And we just talk it out. Well, I bought something and I didn't ask your permission in that account. And I learned it on TikTok. And I went, oh boy, hopefully <laughs> we did all right. He went, no. Oh, no. He's like, he said, I, I know what you're talking about now because this TikTok follower that I follow um, told me to buy this and it made sense to buy it. But you know what he forgot to do is tell me when to sell it. <laughs> well, <sighs> and, um, and then the other thing, and I, I, just like you just said a few minutes ago, you know, was he pushing that stock because he bought a lot of it because there's people out there that have social media accounts and maybe they used to be hedge fund managers or maybe they, they just understand the market very well and what they're doing is they're, they bought a lot of it. Now they want that stock to go up. And when it starts to go up because all of their followers are buying it, they're literally moving the market, Randy. Mm -hmm. They sell and then they're stuck with the, the hat in their hand and it goes down. I mean, this thing about the Warren Buffett ideas, like he'll, he'll make this big push and move and buy something. And then two weeks later, everybody else does. And then he's already out. <laughs> yeah. So um, there's a lot of noise out there. And the thing is, it all sounds great. I, I mean, everybody wants to buy those high flyers and get really lucky. But the, the high probability of that happening doesn't always happen, right? And it actually hurts you a lot. So this client of mine said, okay, I'm committing. He's like, if I'm going to hold on to the reins on this one account, I promise I will reach out to you and talk to you first because that was our deal. That was our handshake. And I said, okay, I need to make sure that money's working for you even though you're managing it because people get excited, Randy. People people love listening to social media and, and saying, okay, here's my advisor. This is what they're doing. I'm going to do this. Let me see if I can beat him or her, right? And it's, there, it becomes like a... It's dopamine. It is true dopamine. And dopamine just gives you that extra energy inside your brain. You get moving. You you get excited about it. But then we lose that dopamine. Mm -hmm. And then we, we have pie face because we're like, okay, it didn't work. <laughs> right? So be very careful because sometimes family advice is the worst advice. Mm -hmm. um, I have two sets of clients that recently came in. And one was mom and dad. And one was son okay. and the wife. And I have to be careful what I say because they can't know what each other's plans are, right? Oh. And um, what I found out by mom and dad is the son and wife were saying things that they were younger. They're, you know, 25 years younger. They're, they're advising them to do it because I had a different philosophy for the son and wife versus mom and dad. Sure. And I, and I said, well, listen, we're in a different age bracket here and they're doing different things and you're doing different things. And I'm not allowed to tell you unless you guys share and give me permission. But there's a reason why your portfolio is a little bit different than son and daughter portfolio. And they went, oh, OK, yeah. And and so we have to remember that um, you got to look at your age. You got to look at your neighbor, Bubba. What are they into? Do they manage their money every day? You can't take their advice because now if you do, you're going to be managing your money every day. And I know most of you out there are like, no, I want nothing to do with that. Right. Well, I've heard many times that sons or daughters, a younger are pushing their parents saying, why aren't you in Bitcoin? You should be in Bitcoin. Look at it go. Mm -hmm. And and so they come into their financial advisor and say, should I be in Bitcoin? And the answer at your season of life is probably not. Or if you are, it's going to be a very, very small percentage of your portfolio. So it's what, what's good for everybody in the family isn't necessarily good for you. And, and we have to sit down and talk through all of that because uh, you are unique. And when we talk about a customized plan and not cookie cutter and those aren't just bumper stickers that's true isn't it Cherise? right we, we don't follow bumper stickers randy <laughs> we, we don't follow tiktok i don't mind hearing ideas to see what somebody else is saying and then i investigate it and be like hey you know what 
that is a great idea. Let's mm-hmm. do it. But, and then sometimes, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, whether it's family, social media, or neighbors. Listen, all I have to say about that, if somebody's doing something that sounds really great, make sure if you're working with your financial planner, our advisor, or, or whoever you're working with, ask them, say, hey, listen, this is what they're saying. What do you think? Yeah. And, 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 or come see us. We'd love to uh, engage that conversation and see what they're saying. And I can say, oh, that's hokey. Oh, based on your season life, I don't recommend it. If you're going to do it, not more than, you know, 1% of your total liquid assets, right? So we, we can give you that advice. Well, the classic one is the one you and I went through a couple of years ago. This name probably doesn't mean anything to anybody, but a guy named Bill Ackman, he's a big Mm -hmm. hedge fund manager. You see him on the financial networks right before COVID. He came out Mm -hmm. and did this interview. I remember it was on the phone and he said, hell is coming. (laughs) And everybody started selling and that set it in motion. Then COVID took place. It went down even more. And Bill Ackman had put a bet against the market and made over a billion dollars. Yes, and, he did. And so this information that you hear out there sometimes, remember, there might consider the source, as mom would tell you, consider the source. If you don't have that person to bounce that information off and some of those things that you hear or that family members are saying or the, the guy in the break room at work who seems to know everything about my 401k, all right, you bounce that off Sharice, 833-368-3680, 833-368. 368-3680. All right. So there is an interesting article out there by GoBankingRates.com, a survey, and they asked people, what do you think you're going to spend in retirement? And the number that came back, 42% of people in this survey plan to live on $1,000 or less per month aside from housing. And I said that seems low. <laughs> did you did you dig in? Did you dig into that article? I I I just saw this. Did you get to dig in to see what they're talking about? Because, Not really. No, I just okay. saw that and I went, what? One thousand a month? Come on, that's that's like your utility bill, your cable bill, and one other bill, and then that's gone. So yeah. So like social media, your neighbors and um, family advice. Sometimes these surveys are a little this backwards to mm-hmm. me. Cause, and this is go banking rates. They survey. do a lot of good They're stuff. They're legit. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, even some of my own clients use it. So I wonder if they mean, are you going to spend a thousand dollars after all of your bills? This is your extra uh, fun money. I am curious. So I, okay. you know me, I like to keep the door open and try to understand some of these surveys since I didn't get to read it, but I will tell you where I'm at with my clients and where our advisors are with their clients. And I will tell you this, I have a client and it's fresh. I mean, literally just two, three days ago, a client that came in that's been with us for, I don't know, six years now. And that that is not the case for them. They need $87,000 a year to live on. Okay. So I don't know where $1,000 extra comes from, but for their scenario, they have a $2,500 mortgage, Right. And that's for the next 25 years of their lives. That's a Plus big a, bill in retirement, yeah. Yeah, and, and they have a cell phone bill, a couple of cell phones. Mom sells on there. They get a grandchild sell on there. That's like $400 a month. Their electric bill is $350. Their food bill, you know, with toilet paper and food is $700 a month. Their insurances with health insurance, life insurance is $600 a month. Their cable bill is $100. They have a miscellaneous bucket for, you know, birthdays or these, these extra things or the long guy of a thousand dollars. That's five thousand six hundred and fifty dollars a month. And they came in and they said, Sharice, you know, those are our bills. You know, that's a big chunk. And I'm like, yeah, I, I agree. We we gotta get this mortgage chunk down. That would be very helpful. So the question was, do we pay off this mortgage or not? And I said, but where's your travel expenses? Part of our income plan originally was that you're gonna do some traveling. And they're like, we really haven't done much of that yet. And I said, okay. So we need $5,600 just to cover our bills, but plus you another, need another $2,000 a month for travel, right? And so we, we put in another $20,000. So they went from, I would say, $600 a month to about um, $7,600 a month so they, they could travel. So I go back to where is that $1,000 mm-hmm. uh, per month that I need? M- most people need much more than that, and I don't know if that's part of their bills or not. But I'm going to tell you, I mean, this is just an average client. And and we talked about if we don't have a mortgage, that $5,600 a month goes to $3,800 a month, Mm -hmm. right? And that gives you an extra almost $2,000 a month to go spend. 
But when we did this income plan and we said, hey, let's say, let's look at if we paid off the mortgage, it was better not to pay the mortgage off. And at the end of the day, because there was more assets left for a legacy 20 and 30 years down the road, there was more assets left for long-term care if we needed to. For the, So for this one particular client, it made sense not to pay it off. And we were still able to help them get that extra $20,000 a year for travel and taxes. So again, you have to do the math. People forget a lot of what goes into what you actually need in retirement and what your actual wants are in retirement. And this particular person says, well, Sharice, we just did a cruise for seven nights and only cost us $3,000. I said, is that an honest $3,000? They went, no, I'm like, right, because you paid for alcohol. You might even got a new watch and you probably did some excursions. I was like, so was that 3000 really 3000 So I get, I dig deep yeah. with my clients and they say, no, it's more like 5500 I said, right, and you want to do another one of these? All right, so now we're at $11,000 in travel just for the year for two cruises and they want to do some local things. So you really have to dial in what is reality? What is the food cost? What are we going to do? Are we going to have a balcony or are we not going to have a balcony? If we're going to just go to the beach for four days here locally in Florida, do you have a water view or do you have a pool view or a parking lot view? All those things go into planning. So $1,000 extra a month for spending might be the case for some people, but the people that we're seeing here at Zinnia Wealth Management, that is just not enough. I've never seen that be enough. So again, there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of big companies writing articles. Let's apply it to your individual situation. Find out if we need to pay off the house or not figure out what that disposable uh, income needs to be to have the travel, to pay the tax bill and all the extras. There's no way to know unless you do the math on your retirement. If I, I think about myself and this probably you're, you're in this category as well. I know what we spend per month on, you know, the cable bill and the utilities and the different expenses of the house. But if you were to ask me, how much do I pay per year in life insurance and health insurance and all these different insurances and then put those per month and try to figure out what that is? I, pff, I have no idea. But that's <laughs> the kind of thing that you need to do as you sit down and plan out your retirement. That's doing the math. And that's what we do at Zinnia Wealth. Give us a call. Give us a couple of minutes of your time. Let's sit down and go through it together to know exactly what the expenses are, exactly what you're going to have as far as a monthly income and put the two together. Here's our number. Here's our website, ZinniaWealth.com, Z-I-N-N-I-A, Wealth.com, or go to 833-368-3680. That's our number, 833-368-3680. All right, here's a big number for you, $3.4 trillion. <laughs> what is that number? Well, you should have a piece of that number, and I'll tell you how so many people are passing that number up and what you can do about it. Coming up next on Retirement Coffee Talk. Welcome back to Retirement Coffee Talk with Sharice Rivers at Zinnia Wealth Online. Find us at ZinniaWealth.com. That's our website, Z-I-N-N-I-A Wealth.com. If it's time to talk about your retirement, click on that gold box there. It says complimentary retirement consultation. That's exactly what it is. It's a free meeting to sit down and talk through your retirement, do some math and figure out what your retirement outlook is. And if we need to make some adjustments, we can make those suggestions. Uh, also on our website, you'll see an event tab there. And you can go through and find out the next Zinnia U opportunity. These are the classes that Cherise teaches. These are free. Coming up at the Villages on the 25th and at Freedom Plaza, we have two, one at 10 o'clock in the morning and one at 3. And then at our Ocala office on the 26th, gosh, you're busy, Cherise. I know. <laughs> is our shredding event. Every year we do this after tax season. So as you find all those old documents that you go, should I be keeping this? And you go, no. Well, we got to get rid of it in a safe way. Let's shred it. And so we provide that service for you. It'll be a nice day, 3 to 5 in the afternoon, our shredding event at our Ocala office on the 26th. You can find out more by going to ZinniaWealth.com. All right, I mentioned a, a number before the break there, and it was $3.4 trillion. Is that the national debt? No. Is that Warren Buffett's... Uh, extra change? No. <laughs> it, is, mm -hmm. it is the number that people collectively lose in the United States by filing for Social Security at age 62. Now, 
I got a nice letter when I turned 62 from the government and says, you haven't filed yet. Why don't you get on it? And you know why? Because that's Uncle Sam's plan for you to claim right at 62 and they come out in the good, usually in that situation. So, Sharice, that discussion, 62, 65, 66, 67, 70, there's a lot to talk through and it's going to be different for everybody again So tell me what goes into that conversation. Well, I will start out by saying there's no wrong and there's no right. And we have to live long enough for it all to make sense, right? So we like the plan. We love our written plans. And we like to see when to turn on Social Security and maybe one person delay. But I will say, if you take Social Security at 62, you don't get 100% of your benefit. Lower benefit, right. You get a lower benefit. Mm -hmm. And if you wait till full retirement age, between the ages 66 and 67, you get 100% of what is owed to you. Mm -hmm. And if you wait to age 70, you get delayed retirement credits about 8% every year. You get so much more. Okay. And a household could come into my office, Randy, and I could say, no, both of you need to start collecting at 62. Without a question, that is what my plan is saying that needs to be done, right? And if we pass away before age 80, it was definitely a glorious move. But if I got it wrong and we don't pass away to like 90, 95, we might have should have waited, right? Mm-hmm. So again, this is why we say the, the plan's not always perfect. Then I have clients who come in and they both want to collect at 62. And I say, well, for your household, the best strategy is yes. The income earner that had a lower salary, I say, yes, let's go ahead and collect at 62. And then the higher income earner will say, let's wait and collect between the ages 65 and 67 because it brings so much more money to the table. Mm -hmm. And that could be a a different reason than another household that has another scenario. But for that household, if somebody passes away and there's no pension in the household, we're going to want to delay Social Security a little bit longer Because when one person passes, Randy, the smaller of the two Social Security checks go away. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure there's more fixed income and guaranteed income in that household for the spouse who's still alive in the house in case they pass away before the ages of 80, right? And then I have an anomalies where both households, they both were incredible um, income earners. Um, Maybe they didn't have kids, right? They both could just work, work, work. And even those households, I sometimes say, one of you collect at 62 and one of you collect at 66 or 67. Sometimes I'll say, hey, how about both of you wait and collect to 66 and 67? So it, it really depends on, Randy, three things. Number one, if there's a pension in a house. Mm-hmm. Number two, the health of the household. What is our health like? Where are we at today at the ages of 62 and 67, right? So that is that is one of our big decision points there. And is mom and dad still alive? And do we have health like mom and dad, right? Okay. And then number three is what do we have saved against what are our liabilities? What do we owe in a mortgage and or other debts, right? A lot of people come in and they don't have a mortgage. They don't have credit card debt. So normally we can take that off um, the plate, but sometimes they do. So there are so many moving parts that help us make, help you make those decisions on when to collect. And I always say, get your money while you can, because I don't know what's going to change in social security, if it makes sense. But we also have to plan for longevity and people are living longer than ever, Randy. And women live typically seven to what, nine years longer than their male counterparts. So We want to make sure that that spouse that might live possibly 10 years longer isn't going to be financially destitute. So there's some planning that takes place. And you might not like what I say, and it does not mean you have to go exactly the way that that the plan says, but I'll at least show it to you and I'll be your mediator. So it helps you make that better decision. And that's the key here. The better decision, maybe it's somewhere we meet in the middle. Or maybe you say, screw you, Sharice, I'm going my way, <laughs> right? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But- all right, I'm going to throw you a curveball here. Oh, boy. Are you ready? Okay. Yep, I'm ready. So in all the articles that I read for the show, I happened upon this. This particular advisor said, when I ask somebody what they want to do about Social Security, and they say, I don't know, my default is always take it at 62. I'm like, what? I've never heard that before. So I keep reading. Mm -hmm. And the rationale is this. 
If you want to pass money on to your heirs, your spouse, your kids, your grandkids, that kind of thing, you can't pass Social Security money along. You can pass your 401k and your assets. So this particular person said, I would rather you take the Social Security, get your $2,000, $3,000 a month instead of rating your 401k. And that way you'll have more to give to your heirs. So in their mind, it was a it was a inheritance play. Right. So you don't like the idea. Tell me about that. So, yeah, you could go down that route. Right now we're predicting longevity. We're predicting that you're going to live five and 10 years, 15, 20, maybe 30 years. But like I said, you can plan to your blue in the face and it doesn't always work out. So mm-hmm. let, let's play that that story out. So we're husband and wife. We both take Social Security at 62. We preserve the 401k in the future. Mm -hmm. So this 401k in 10 years doubles. And now we are 75 years old and we have to take an RMD out of that money. So your million dollars that is now potentially, if you stayed in the same risk pot, is $2 million. You're not taking $40,000 a year in RMD money and paying taxes on that. You're you're taking $80,000 a year. Okay. So... You have to worry about the tax man. That just means there's potentially more taxes not even going to your beneficiaries. Uh, it's going to Uncle Sam, right? Okay. So that that's one part you have to play out. Now, what if somebody passes away early? We took it at 62 now, and you passed away eight or 10 years later, and now there's a small Social Security check on the table um, because we didn't have a higher Social Security check because mm-hmm. we took it lower. Now the spouse still live in a house. Um, we call it widow and widower penalty. They're paying almost almost double the taxes now that we're filing single widow, right? Mm-hmm. And on top of that, we need more income. So we're having to pull more money out of this 401k. So we can go three different directions here, and we don't know where we're going to land. So it's not always, do we listen to these articles? Hey, let's just take it at 62. Social Security might not be there in the future. Or let's take it at 62 because we'll have more assets later on. But because that's not necessarily true if if you've passed away and there's not a pension and now there's only one Social Security and that spouse that's still alive has to take more money to pay that tax bill, has to take more money just to live or if there's any debt left, have to pay off that debt. So, again, Hmm. I like the idea, but I don't like the idea. And it will depend on each individual situation. Randy, when people come to my office, you would think everybody's the same. Everybody's retired. We all have gray hair. We're all doing everything the same. And we're not. (laughs) We are totally different. And I didn't know that like 20 years ago when I started all this. And I realized that every household is completely different. There is no two households the same. And every situation is completely different. The wishes, the dreams, um, the liabilities, the savings, the income, the fixed incomes, it's all different. Well, and we have to bob and weave and make it work for that household. As you go through all of that, I sit and say, how could anybody who doesn't live in this world that you mm-hmm. live in figure this out? There is just so many yeah. things to consider. So we're I go back to it again. Let's do the math on your retirement. Let's do the math on your Social Security. That's what we do at Zinnia Wealth. Give us a look on our website, ZinniaWealth.com, Z-I-N-N-I-A Wealth.com. Hit the gold box there. It says complimentary retirement consultation. When you click on that, we'll ask you a few questions, and our team reaches out to you. We'll get a date on a calendar. Or you can bypass all that and just call us, 833-368-3680. Again, 833 833- 368-3680. And of course, that meeting is free. All right, Sharice, that is all the time that we have for today. I'll give you the last word on this one. Well, thank you all for listening. Um, don't forget to send us your questions. We can answer them on air. You can go to our website and just type them in there. Give us a call. You could even text us. Don't forget to tune in to our previous shows. And if you miss anything this week, go to our Retirement Coffee Talk podcast on Apple, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, on every outlet you can think of. And as usual... Live by design and not by default. And we'll see you here next week. This has been Retirement Coffee Talk. To find out more about how the strategies we've discussed on this program can build the retirement you've been wanting, call Zinnia Wealth at 352-368-3680 or visit us online at zinniawealth.com. 
Sharice Rivers is an investment advisor representative of Zinnia Wealth Advisory, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Investments can fluctuate and when redeemed may be worth more or less than when originally invested. Financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. To find out if Sharice Rivers is licensed in your state, please contact their office. Zinnia Wealth Advisory, LLC, is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. Any client experiences discussed during this show are unique to that client. They are not meant to imply or suggest you will experience the same results. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Sharice Rivers, NPN Insurance License Number 8718011.